Good morning. We open our Seaford Lutheran Church's online service on the 10th of July in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Can you believe it's halfway through the year, over halfway through the year now? So this today marks the end of NADOT week. And so I did a bit of history uh, research because I really didn't know what NADOC week was all about. And I found out that William Cooper, born in 1860, a Yorta Yorta man, uh, which is at the area Yorta Yorta is around the intersection of the Murray and Goulburn rivers in Victoria. And uh, he grew up in a very large family and he had made friends with uh, Daniel Matthews in his 20s, who was a missionary. Now, uh, William Cooper took a strong interest in the message of the Bible. And in his early church, uh, 20s, uh, following a church service on, uh, in January 1884, Cooper approached Daniel Matthews and said, I must give my heart to God. Now, he was the last of his brothers and sisters to become a Christian. And Cooper's long campaign for Aboriginal rights, especially land rights, began in 1887, soon after he gave his heart to the Lord. And I guess you can see that uh, when a group of people is marginalised and outcast and discriminated against, it's obviously not in the keeping with uh, Jesus' good news. In 1935, at the age of 74, so this is a long time after he started campaigning, Cooper established the Australian Aborigines League. Their, petition, their petitions and representations to government were totally ignored. A day of mourning was begun, the day before Australia Day, and it ran annually until 1955. In 1956, major Aboriginal organisations, state and federal governments, and church leaders got together and all supported the formation of the National Aborigines Day Observance Committee, NADOC. And at that time, on the second Sunday of July, the day became the Remembrance Day for Aboriginal people and their heritage. And that is today, the second Sunday in July. So hence we celebrate NADOC week, remembering the struggle of the Aborigines, but also acknowledging the wonderful history, the 65,000 years of continual history of our First Nations people. Now, this year's NADOC week slogan is get up, stand up and show up. And it's what William Cooper and other church leaders did, motivated by the Christian faith when responding to the plight of fellow Indigenous brothers and sisters. And it's also what the Samaritan did in today's Gospel. He got up, he stood up, he showed up for his neighbour, even though he didn't know him. And it's what Jesus calls us to do, to love others as Christ loves us. So let us pray. Thank you, merciful God, for showing your love for us by sending your Son to live among us and to suffer and die. Lead us to reflect this love to our neighbours by helping them in all their needs. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we ask God to take our lives and let them be ever only in his service of love to others. my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee take my moments and my days let them flow in endless praise let them flow in endless praise take my lips and let Messages from thee. Take my 
take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne, it shall be thy royal Today's reading comes from Luke, chapter 10, verses 18 to 20 and 25 to 37. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your name is, names are written in heaven. And then the parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. At the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of three, these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This is the words of our Lord. Thanks be to you, God. Greetings, everybody, and may God's peace be on all of us today. Today's Gospel reading is the parable of the Good Samaritan, and that's surely one of the best known of Jesus' parables, and the one that has spoken to Christians and one that has spoken to Christians over the millennia. And as we look at it again this morning, I'd like to consider especially its context and to think about where we might be in that parable. You will recall, if you heard last week's Gospel lesson and Pastor Kevin's sermon on it, that Jesus had sent out 72 disciples to preach and heal. These 72 had come back to Jesus, overjoyed with their success, and Jesus had rejoiced with them. He talks, as you would have heard, of Satan falling from heaven, and, although we did not read this bit again, that the Father had hidden these things from the wise and learned, and revealed them to little children. That's in verse 21. But he emphasised especially that the 72 would be happy, not because of their power over spirits, but because their name was written in heaven. Now, in today's reading, Luke follows up these themes. One of the wise and learned, 
that uh, had been mentioned before, he's an expert in the law, does indeed come to Jesus and ask what he has to do to achieve eternal life. And that's what Jesus is referring to when he tells the 72 that their names are written in heaven. Jesus, as you heard, turns the question back onto the questioner. What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? And the expert gives the correct answer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. After being told by Jesus to go out and do that, the legal expert comes back with a supplementary question. And just who is my neighbour? What we have here is an attempt to draw a line around obligations, to limit them. The implication of the question is that some people are my neighbour and the rest are not. I'm obliged to love the former, but not the latter. The teacher of the law wants to put a box around his religion. This part of my life is under the control of religion. This part is not. If I just get this part of my life right, the religious part, then that's got eternal life done and dusted. In a sense, by limiting God, we master him. Have we ever felt like that? Jesus responds with a story, that of the Good Samaritan. I'd like to draw our attention to two aspects in particular. The first is the man who is robbed. We know almost nothing about him other than that he was male, and he probably had to be in that society to be making that journey. And, more importantly, that he was in need. Half dead. His race, his age, his wealth, his position in society, whether he was of good, bad or middling character, his religion or lack of it, whether or not he was one of us, a person like us, whether he should have been there alone in the first place, knowing the danger, all of that is not the slightest relevance to the story. He is simply an anonymous person in need. If we want to divide the world into those who are our neighbours and those who are not, this story gives us no help. All that we see is need. And as, and as all of us need, who is our neighbour? Secondly, at the end of the parable, Jesus doesn't ask who was whose neighbour, but who was a neighbour who acted as a neighbour to the victim of the robbers. The neighbour is not the one in need, but the one who shows compassion. So we measure the neighbour, not by some characteristic of the other, but of ourselves. Our neighbours are the ones to whom we show compassion. If these observations are valid, then there is no limit to the pool of neighbours. For all people are in need. All people are potentially objects of our compassion. But to look at it like that is still missing, I think, the point of Jesus' story for us. For the story is also, sorry, for the story is about not who is our neighbour, but how we act. After Jesus had finished the story, after he had asked who was our neighbour to the person in need, and the legal expert had replied that it was one who showed mercy, Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. That is an emphatic you, and it doesn't come through in translations, but it's there in the text. Jesus makes it very personal. He removes the tone of the discussion from a nice academic one about the definition of the neighbour to an existential command to a specific action. Go and show mercy. This is confronting. It was the despised Samaritan, rather than the people of God, who showed mercy. There is a challenge to us individually as Christians and corporately as church. The priests and the Levite, people of God, did not show mercy. 
If we measure ourselves against anybody in this story, who is it? And how do we measure up? But the business of measuring is fraught in the first place. Remember that the legal expert wanted to know what he had to do to achieve life. And remember that the 72 already had their names written in heaven. We do best to see ourselves in this story first, not as either priest or Levite or Samaritan, but as the one who was robbed, the one who was in desperate need, the one who was as good as dead. I said that that person was anonymous. He could look like me, he could look like you, he could look like anybody. In the end, there is only one good Samaritan, one person who shows us and everybody ultimate compassion, always, fully, every time. One person who stopped and tended us, who eased our wounds, who carried us, who saw that we have clothing, shelter, food, life itself, who makes provision for our, for our ongoing support, who indeed writes our name in heaven. That person, that good Samaritan, of course, is Jesus. It is only when we have received God's compassion, and the word used by the legal expert is the very same one that is used in the New Testament of God's mercy to us, it's only when we receive that compassion that we are truly free to be a neighbour. Being a neighbour is not about what we have to do to earn eternal life. Jesus has already seen to that. Rather, it is being a channel for this very same mercy that we have received. It is a response to God's mercy to us. It is allowing the compassion of God to work in the world through us, without limits imposed by ourselves, without limits to do with neighbourliness, as we recognise and respond to need, wherever and in whomever it might be found. Father, we thank you for your mercy to us. Help us to be free and open channels of that mercy into this world and help us to be true neighbours. In Christ's name, Amen. Please join with me in prayer. I confess, Father, that I am a priest and I am the Levite. Not only did I walk past, I walked away. I was too busy, too frightened. My heart was too cold. In my own abundance, I was too poor in spirit. To bear the cost. In my own comfort, I was too complacent to suffer any inconvenience. I couldn't, I wouldn't make the time. I couldn't, I wouldn't find the energy. I wouldn't, couldn't be bothered. I couldn't, I wouldn't follow you. And for that, I ask forgiveness. And I thank you for that forgiveness, the forgiveness won for me 2,000 years ago on the cross. Change me to be more like the Samaritan, to be more like Jesus, who was faithful and loving and who gave himself sacrificially. Open my eyes and my heart to see my neighbours who have been left half dead by crushing work, who had fallen into the hands of despair, who have been abandoned by all those who walked on by them. Strangers, people I don't know, but can quickly judge, who are different, who don't share my values and faith and beliefs, who are weak or poor or outcast. Heavenly Father, rescue us from the power of our sins, our closed minds, our closed eyes, our closed hearts. Pour out your spirit on us that we would be moved with pity and spurred into action to see our neighbour in need, to share the hope that is ours, to shower mercy on all we meet, as you have showered your mercy, love and blessing on us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Father, we bring before you those on our hearts who need your healing 
and comfort. We particularly pray for healing and strength for Gaila, Pelchin and Bob Hurrell. Father, we are weak, but with you we are strong. Let us look to you for the power and confidence to get up, to stand up and to show up in sharing your love to our neighbours. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our names are written in heaven, but we still struggle with guilt, with the consciousness that we could and would want to have done things differently, and with a sense of our own imperfection. Although have we have received mercy, we have not always shown mercy. So knowing that our names are written in heaven, let us, as travellers in need on the road of life, bring again that need to Jesus, our good Samaritan, and let him again assure us of his forgiveness. Father, we confess that we are not neighbours to those in need, as we could be, and that we are constantly in need ourselves of your mercy. Forgive us, assure us yet again of your love and our standing as your people. In Jesus' name, Amen. And I declare to you, as one Christian to another, that we are forgiven. Jesus gives us life and is the perfect neighbour to us, now and always. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you? yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoner free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Through my sight and touch and sound in you and you. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show and I'll move and live and grow in you.
The word of God assures us that we are able to love through the spirit of Christ. Let us go from this place with authority, knowing that God gives us strength to get up, to stand up, to show up, to love our neighbours near and far, and gives us the power to speak up for those who are broken. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road ahead. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. And may the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your eyes to love. May you see the Christ in everyone you meet and may everyone you meet see the, the face of Christ in us. Go in the peace, love, joy and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.